All right, welcome in YouTube and Knoll community to yet another of my build highlight videos. It is very warm and sunny today in Germany and it is about to get even hotter in here in the game. Let me introduce you to my fire mortar trap Pyron Elementalist. Now this build is using the full Pyron set for, well, physical to fire and lighting to fire conversion for mortar traps, as well as the hex flame one-handed dagger that is also like gonna be there to further support mortar trap as well as giving you additional resistance reduction via Thermite Mine. The rest of the build is more or less just like the classes themselves, right? And it is using fire damage and mortar trap as a like main damage. And then Shaman is there, first of all, for hydrogen support and also for like, well, percent resistance reduction for all elemental damage types, so also fire damage. Now you can of course play this also as a shield breaker or as a sorcerer. The Pyron set supports Oathkeeper as well as Arcanus very, very well as well, and those two classes will have or all more damage than a Elementalist. I try to somewhat make Elementalist work because first of all, Elementalist doesn't have too many builds. It is a rather weak class overall, and second of all, motor traps work in a way that. You kind of are getting punished if you're kiting around too much because water traps need to like shoot and fall down and then hit on the enemy. So enemies have a very easy time to like basically kite water traps um, if you're like kiting as well at the same time. So you need to kind of like stand still as much as you can to like tank the enemy so that you guarantee the mortars to hit the enemy as well, right? So it is kind of unfortunate that even though this would in theory be a just put down traps and then like cut around traps kind of playstyle, it really isn't because the mortars are so slow at like hitting and shooting. So you kind of have to like face tank enemies as well, or at least like trying to run around them so that they like stand still and you just like, well, try to dodge like some attacks of them, but you don't ever will be able to like dodge all of the attacks. And because of that, and also because of the fact that you cannot leech with motor traps, right? There is no item that gives a like leech to motor traps, or like you cannot in any way like heal from motor traps. Kinda like makes you a little bit more reliant on health gen or like active heals. Um, if you are playing a she breaker or a sorcerer, you have well ascension and mirror to like help you out defensively if you are a elementalist. However, you will get more health gen from say Mojogan's Pact or Vindictive Flame. Um, to further support that, we're also using one Goddard's Ring, for example. But let's talk about the gear later, and let's talk about the skill point allocation first. So we are a Demolitionist, right? Main class here. Motor Trap, 26 points in the base skill, 21 points in Heavy Ordnance. All the lighting damage is converted to Fire, and also all the physical damage on the base skill is also converted to Fire. And then also, I'm actually using 18 out of 12 points in the big one. Now, this is very controversial, right? There are many Motor Trap builds out there that don't even use the big one at all. Um, I think though that it is not that bad and it does provide you additional AoE and also what is really nice, at least against enemies that can be slowed, is the slow, right? Because the slow makes it easier for also the like default motor projectiles to hit the enemy when you have to kite around a little bit at least. Then of course, thus being a finer build, you want the Thermite Mine Resistance Reduction maxed out, right? At 22 out of 16 points here. You are, however, a dual resistance reduction like class, right? Like, Shaman also has a resistance reduction to elemental damage, um, or like for elemental damage rather, so you could also like go only for the value point if you want to put more points into, say, Vindictive Flame, as well as McDrogan's Pact for that health gen bonus, right? But for now, it's only 10 out of 16 points in Vindictive Flame. <clears throat> I think it's actually only like a one point or like maybe a couple of more than just one point. And then one pointer to Uzun's Wrath, just for this to like exist. But really, for damage reduction, we are using Demon Fire right, as our damage reduction debuff from the cocktail line, right? You have like 12 points cocktail to have like good uptime, also like always red. Then you have 14 points in Demon Fire for that 17% damage reduction, it's like the nice value point here. And then you have, well, just maxed uh, out Agonizing Flames, which means that you don't have to like use flat resistance reduction from Devotions, right? Then also, of course, you need to max out Flame Touch, right? 16 out of 12 points here, 1 point to Temper. Um, at least one point, which is five points on the spell to blast shield. You can also like put us at ten points if you want to. Ten points are really nice as well. And then just one point to flashbang, one point to searing light because honestly, a demo without like using the fumble and imperate aim from searing light is just not a proper demo. And this also does help you to face tank enemies a bit more uh, because of the fumble. It's really really nice against melee hits. Then in the Shaman Tree, we're just using one point Wind Devil, and then I mixed out the Raging Tempest, right, for that element resistance reduction. And I don't even have a single point in Maelstrom, because I don't have any, like, global lighting to fire conversion. I only have that locally converted on Motor Trap. Um, 
so yeah if you don't have the conversion it's not really like worth putting a point here if you had the conversion though it will always be worth at least one point into the skill because that generally deals a lot of damage one point mogdongus pact but as i mentioned earlier like you can put out like put out more points from like raging temps and thermite mine like put them into mogdongus pact or like we need to flame if you want to have more regen right 10 out of 10 points to heart of the wild pretty much standard for most shamans and then like a maxed out oak skin because armor and pierce thrust and aether rest is really really nice as well as the defensive ability on this like passive and then well demolition is not, not having any like exclusive skills and shaman only having a lightning cold focus one as well as prime bond we are actually using prime bond here just for the absorption right just to make this carrier tankier and to be able to face tank more so that your mortar traps have an easier time hitting um, this is like one of the reasons why this build is also somewhat tankier than say a ship breaker, right? If you are a sorcerer, I mean you still have like the maven sphere, right? You are pretty tanky as a sorcerer as well actually, but the elementalist overall I would say is certainly tankier than say a ship breaker, but has less damage. Let's take a look at the devotions, right? These are pretty standard for a fire build. We are using Eldritch Fire, right? The Solar Switch Blade as a like mandatory devotion for every single fire build in the game, right? Uh, gives us 23% resistance reduction to fire. Then we're also using like Torch um, and Magi. Both have like great fire damage, pretty standard here. And then these are mostly like fillers because we also want 18 blues for Korvac. Now I'm also actually using Korvac here because uh, like why not, right? It works pretty decently with, together with Torch. Has like, you have 15 green anyway, it's so, like you only need the blue. And uh, Eye of Korvac works really nice on the, together with Wind Devil. You don't have to play this devotion though. This is um, like my personal touch to it because I really like the CC, the petrification that you get from these like um, eyes swirling around, and also like the Wind Devil does a great job at like procking those. That's really really nice. I like it personally a lot. But uh, you being a demolitionist, you don't really need the OA and the A shred on this that much, right? Your cocktail has OA shred and your flashbang has the A shred already anyway, so those don't really stack with Iron of Korak either. So here would be a different devotion page, which is, in my opinion, actually probably better on this current patch, because they buffed Blind Sage as well, right? This one has insane fire percent and burn damage, as well as additional offensive ability now. Um, so basically you don't have Korvac, you don't have 18 blues, you only have 4 blues because that's all you need to get the Behemoth, right? So the blues are Viper and the Crossroads here. No more Lizard, no more Satyr's Guide, no more Eel. And then for the purple instead, we are picking Quill and Wolverine to get the Blind Sage, basically. And also like one point in the Crossroads and the last node can go into the last node and onto the Torch, giving us even more burn damage, of which the... Well, Mortar Trap does have some, or rather, I mean, the skill modifiers for the Mortar Trap have some burn damage, and also the big one has tons of burn damage. This devotion page also means that you have better OA and DA if you compare this to the other devotion page. I'm gonna show this here in a second, and you can take out some more spirit and put more points in physique instead. I have 70 points in physique right now with this setup, one point in cunning, and 27 in spirit. Whereas the other one had 32 points on Spirit and only 74 in Physique. And also you can see the OA and especially the defensive ability were a bit lower. The Korvac setup will have more total HP though. The other one will have less HP with the Blind Sage. So just expect the Korvac setup to be overall more defensive, especially with the CC from those like circling eyes. And expect the Blind Sage devotion page to deal more damage at the cost of like 1000 HP less basically. Now when it comes to the gear, let's check out the gear. As I said, like I'm using Hex Flame, right? I'm using 4-piece Pyron. Then for resistance reduction, I'm using Combustion Band as well on the ring. And the other ring is a Goddess Ring. This is not a of mending ring, right? Of mending suffix would have even more regen. And you could also like, if you want to go like really, really, really heavy on regen, you could like play two Goddess Rings and max out both of those, like Vindictive Flame and uh, Mogdrogan's Pact. It wouldn't quite be on the same level as Avenger Warlord probably, but it would still like be very 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 good when it comes to regen. And Pyrants that also like supports regen, so it's pretty like self-explanatory to like trying to go for regen if you're playing a motor trap build like this. The Amulet, now this one has been recently buffed in patch 1.1.9.6 and this is very insane for elementals, right? You have tons of health, health regen, percent health regen, 5% physicalness, um, plus one all skills to both masteries, plus two to the victim flame as well, plus five max vitress, plus eight max chaos rust. Like if you're playing elementalist and you want to be tanky, I'm pretty sure you pretty much always pick up this like any right? Anyway. The grounded skill actually still leaves vitality damage, which is a little weird. 
Like, this could be another way of healing for you, if you convert the Vitality to Fire at least. Gloves are Dawn Shard Grip. These are pretty much mandatory for motor trap builds, right? Just add another summon limit to motor traps. Really, really nice. Then we have Hellforged Leg Plates. These don't really give us like any skill points that we need, but they have like fire damage and up to 7% physical resistance. So they just like make any fire damage build pretty decently tanky as well. Very nice. Uh, Serenity plus one all skills. There isn't really like any great fire damage elemental loss relic, I feel like. So I just went for Serenity. Um, I mean, the Panzer was always great as well. Like the like, Circuit Breaker is always great to save your life as well in Hardcore, especially. And then we have the Chains of Orders as a plus one all skills to the Blinishes build. Uh, you can also kind of like choose another like the Uzuin's chest, uh, the Uzuin's belt for example as well for plus one demo. However, this one lets you use whatever apexes you get on top and I got like of the Drangul I guess pretty decent mystic prefixes like and it's not that amazing but it does help me like with percent spirit, like this percent spirit does help me with getting like the 724 spirit. I actually have like a little bit too much spirit right now here. So, I mean, this belt, like the prefix, makes me like able to have to put less points to spirit than without this. But, I mean, you can like definitely get better affixes and you can also definitely like use the Ulduin's uh, belt on that, right? The stun rest that comes with this, like by default, is pretty nice though. Then we also have the Mark of Kalimish's Desires. This one adds just like more fire damage to motor trap and helps me max out those fire motor traps as well, right? Plus the motor trap is pretty nice here as well. Also, you can craft this one and you can also craft the helmet. So I crafted both of these and I got like 2% armor on each, which is like pretty decent, I guess. Um, could be better, but it's all right. And then finally, we've got the boots. These are just worm scale foot guards for plus two RR, basically on thermite mines and like Stun Rest and Petrify Rest, which is also very, very nice on this build. Now, the A you can see is a little low here, but I was still like able to kill Avatar Mokjogun, even though he was able to crit me. No problem there, really. And uh, percent fire damage is also not that amazing, because we are a Elementalist and not a Shebreaker. Um, Fizzle Rest is 20%. Uh, regen, however, is not too bad, right? Like 1.5k by default. This is, remember again, right, only one point to Vindictive Flame and one point here. You could, like, put more points here if you want to be more region focused. And, uh, yeah, if you have Giant's Blood active, it will go to, like, 3 to 4k, I believe. And if you have, like, proper investment and health gen, it would be even higher. Let's see if we can uh, proc this Giant's Blood real quick here, just to, like, show you the region values when you were getting hit, right? Uh, there you go, like, 3.2k, right, when you're getting hit when Giant's Blood is active. It's not like super amazing for a build that's supposed to be like regen focused, um, but again, it's only one pointer in the regen, like in the actual regen abilities, and those points could be like taken at the like expense of resistance reduction, which is always a little bit questionable, but it would certainly make the character tankier. Anyway, let's check out this build in proper action. I'll run some clips here, and also remember to check out the um, like kill for Morg Dogen, for example, in this character, as well as my Shadow Realm 65 to 66 attempt, and also a Crucible attempt on this character. Links are gonna be down below. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around on the next one. Let's actually test that like after uh, the done here. Check the files first, do it Hackerman style. Check the files first. That's, that's locked. Okay. Dude, freaking Theodian, like, even on this meme build, he, like, dies in a second. Like, what is this? I mean, it's not a meme build, but it's, like, it's not good damage, right, on this build. Freaking Theodian has no HP, man. Like, please buff this man. Like, what is this? He's such a cool boss, has such cool abilities, but you never even see anything of his abilities, right? I feel like Theodian has probably, like, cooler abilities than Korak, even. But you don't see them, right? You don't, you just don't see him. He doesn't, he doesn't do shit. Oh, I just died almost. What the fuck? <laughs> Maybe don't face thing right on an elementalist. No regen. But nerf regen rather. It has, it has regen right, Copium. So it's a little scuffed right now, but we'll see. If Crate is able to fix the conversion issues that this build has right now. Or if they just can like remove the conversion by set again.
hit you. The motors like instantly annihilated the plants, so I don't even get hit by uh, like the RR, right? Alright, it's pretty chill. I mean, it's always not the quickest kill, but you don't play elementalists to like have good kill times. You just play elementalists to like chill, right? And hope that you're not playing a trash ball, right? I am sorry. Um, I said like it's gonna be fine if I don't get hit by the jump, but I mean it's still fine even if you get hit by the jump, right? Alright. Gonna be a lot more challenging. Which is why right now I'm a little bit overpowered. For like the content that I'm doing right now. But I have to like still do this because I need certain like augments to well get the last like 0.1% out of my build. And for that I need to, well, get the reputation with factions, and the best way to do that is to just do the main campaign. So stage 1 down before meteors from the skies, stage 2 down before he spawns minions. I mean for a fire build and for an elementalist, that's still like good damage, right? That's still totally fine. And we can't face snake even though we don't have to even. Ah, ah. We even killed him before an invulnerability phase into stage 3, that's like actually really good. I'm actually surprised. I mean, I guess the RR from like Windows and Thermite Mines and Cocktail aren't like that bad after all. That's my highest DPS build. Weep figurines that you like come on, right? On screen. <laughs> so it wouldn't be that big of a deal, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. To be fair, like most of them are probably rather gonna be underpowered than overpowered. Is my guess, at least for endgame. But we'll see. I think some of them could be actually really good for endgame as well. Oh, chill out, Queen. As people give it by believing in a threat. Fuck philosophy, more politics. <laughs> what the fuck is this topic? I'm here for politics. <laughs> Are you here for Romans? Oh no, please not. Please no Romans. Please no Romans, dude. It, it, some it's worse and some it's better. But it doesn't mean you should like stop trusting all the new newspapers. Like, there's still some that are better than others. And also, like, it depends on also like on the source from like where they get their news again. Right. Also depends on the topic sometimes as well. I feel like join it to like play it for the additional content that we added. Like we've added some new content that is not um, available for you to play in the standard Grim Dawn. Like some new items, new bosses, uh, some like events that you could somewhat compare to maybe like um, the totems in a way, I guess. I think this room should be actually really easy for this build. Because you can just, well, put on everything and just like run around in circles. Yeah, as with all the content, all this part of it. Yeah, 
That was actually surprising easy. Alright, 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 alright. Oh man, I got hit! Scuffed! And he's spinning instantly anyway. Alright, that's gonna be a long one, I guess. At least we killed us chase with all the OE. Like, no problem, right? Oh my fucking god, the hole! He jumped on me. Why did I get hit? Don't get hit, guys. Just don't get hit. Uh, Monka? It's a scuff fight, dude. Jump. Jump. I don't know. Jump. Is he gonna jump? What? Jump. Oh my god, I actually got hit. Oh, well, at least we got a ring. That's something, that's something. You should really get pots for this fight. Don't do it without mods. I mean, uh, pots. Don't fight us without mods, right? Monk. No pots in chat. People shake. There's a new channel prediction coming up. Leave it your own risk. People shake. Read the fine manual. I should ask my good friend No Manual how to do this fight. Because he doesn't even need a manual. Oh my god, I'm frozen to death. What's up, Fizzrus? Hello? I have minus 35% Fizzrus. Wow, how? How, dude? How? I like hit by all the curses like a potato. I mean, there are some that have like CC Rus here. I mean, resistance reduction rather. I have 19% Fizzrus. Actually, 18, I can't read. That's still not that good, right? Are we cheesing these? That's not cheese this fight, right? That's boring. Like, why did they lose aggro, hello? Please aggro me. 67% uh, total resistance reduction? Okay, dude. What's happening, dude? Uh, I feel like a tiger in a cage, dude. Getting like rush per minute arms. Oh, the debuffs on me again, mock. And that's why you want to use pots against these guys. Actually, like especially the resistance pots are like actually useful in this fight because uh, they have lots of RR, like 67 flat. What the fuck was that? Dude? Absolutely insane. Hog. Not even close. I mean, apart from being frozen almost to death and like almost dying another time because of RR. It didn't spawn the clones, but... It did hurt a bit.